हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अनादर एक्साइटिंग लेक्चर फॉर सी ए इंटर लॉ अपटिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ कंपनीज एक्ट सेक्शन वन एंड वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस फ्यू डेफिनेशनल क्लॉजेस फ्रॉम सेक्शन टू सो वी कवर्ड अप टू क्लॉज थर्टी सिक्स नाउ लेट एस कंटिन्यू विद क्लॉज थर्टी सेवन क्लॉज थर्टी सेवन डिफाइंस एम्प्लॉई स्टॉक ऑप्शन द प्रोविजन आर एक्चुअली कंटेन अंडर सेक्शन सिक्सटी टू सबसेक्शन वन clause b so this we will be discussing later in the chapter share and share capital now what is an employee stock option scheme this is basically an option it's not a compulsion okay it's just an option given to okay let's highlight the few words firstly it is an option it's not a compulsion you don't have to buy it to whom is it given to directors officers or employees of company holding or subsidiary company or companies so my second keyword is to whom is this option given third is it may be either of the company or the holding company or subsidiary company what is this option actually what is this all about it is to subscribe or to purchase okay it's a right to purchase or subscribe for shares of the company at a future date at predetermined price so there's no connect connection with the coding but i am just highlighting the few keywords for you so it is an option given to whom director officer employee of company holding or subsidiary what is this option to purchase or to subscribe for the shares of the company at a future date for at a pre sorry at a future date at a predetermined price so let's say for example that the price at which they can buy okay it's an option it's not a compulsion the employee may choose to buy the option uh, the shares at 100 rupees we are giving them the option to buy at 100 rupees if the price in the market is 150 rupees then this is in the money in the money means it makes sense to buy it from the uh, to exercise this option you will buy at 100 rupees you will sell at 150 rupees in the market you will make a profit of 50 rupees it is in the money it makes sense to exercise this option but what if the market price reduces to 50 rupees per share okay it reduces to 50 rupees per share then will you exercise this option no in that case it makes sense to buy it from the market itself you are getting it at 50 whereas in the option you may have to you will have to pay 100 rupees it is out of money okay since it is out of money you will not exercise this option so it is not compulsory it's just an option given to these employees officers directors to purchase shares or to subscribe to the shares of the company at a predetermined price why is it given why are we so considerate towards the employees directors etc this is an employee retention tactic i want to retain the employees in the business so what i'm doing i'm giving them a carrot stay for 3 years we'll give you esop at the end of 3 years so we'll give you 100 shares then you can buy 100 shares after you complete 4 years 200 shares after you complete 5 years so what will happen for 3 years i will stay in the organization because i want these esops it is giving me an option to buy the shares at a predetermined price whatever be the price in the market so this is just like a carrot given to the employee so they will be encouraged you know to stay in the organization okay let me wait for another year take another stock option and then go so basically employee stock option scheme even sweat equity these are all employee retention tactics used by the company and it is very good it is for the benefit of employees also no they are getting the shares at a predetermined price they can sell it in the market at a higher price it is not very quick it is not immediate like today i exercise the option i get the shares tomorrow i sell no there is a gap between vesting and exercising of option we are going to discuss that in section 62 later but as of now just remember that employee stock option is just an option given to the directors officers employees of company holding subsidiary to purchase or to subscribe for the shares of the company in the future at a predetermined price it is so easy to remember when you break the definition into small parts yes okay let next let us discuss the definition of an expert now you will use this definition when you study the uh, chapter prospectus 
in prospectus opinion of an expert is included so we need to know who is an expert before the 2013 act expert was not defined but in the 2013 act they have taken the effort to uh, define an expert there is an easy way to remember who is included in the definition of expert e v c a c s c m a e is for engineer v is for valuer c a c s c m a okay easy to remember so it includes an engineer it's an inclusive definition it includes engineer valuer chartered accountant company secretary cost accountant cost and management accountant cma but it also includes any other person who has the power or authority to issue a certificate in pursuance of any law for the time being in force let's say i am an architect and my law has given me the authority to issue a certificate i am an expert doctor yes you must have obtained a doctor certificate some or the other at, at some of the other point in your life so doctor certificate so if my law allows me the authority to issue a certificate i am an expert so who is an expert e v c a c s c m a e is for expert sorry e is for engineer v is for valuer c a c s c m a any person who has the authority or the right to issue a certificate in pursuance of any law for the time being in force okay next financial institution is not even given in your module that is why i have written na financial statement yes financial statement in relation to a company i think now you are very comfortable reading the language of law in relation to a company it means the 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 term financial statement is described in relation to a company it includes okay it is an inclusive definition it includes balance sheet it includes profit and loss account and if your company is a non profit organization then it includes income and expenditure account okay so income and expenditure account in case of non profit organization it includes cash flow statement statement of changes in equity and explanatory note now how uh, i'll just uh, discuss with you how i would make notes when i was studying for ca i used to use the left margin a lot like you know uh, if i'm reading the definition of financial statement i would write balance sheet profit and loss account or income and expenditure account cash flow statement statement of changes in equity and notes so this way it would become very easy for me to revise any concept quickly because all the keywords were written on the left margin you can try that i think it will be helpful to you okay but there is a proviso provided that the financial statements with respect to one person company small company dormant company it may not include the cash flow statement because it is very tedious to prepare this is one of the privilege given to opc small company or dormant company that you need not prepare your cash flow statement they may not include so if you want you can include but if you don't include it we won't take any action against you clause 40 and the definition both are important for exam okay now let us discuss one very interesting definition clause 41 defines financial year whenever i use the word year it generally means calendar year okay you are not specifying whether it is financial year or calendar but the word year means calendar year and what is the calendar year that we follow we follow the british calendar year which begins from 1st of january to 31st of december okay now whenever you wish your friend new year what do you say happy new year this you will do on 1st of january will you wish your friend on some other date no so when you say happy new year year means calendar year beginning from 1st of january ending on 31st of december so whenever i use the word year it is a calendar year and we follow the british calendar year but when i use the word financial year it begins on 1st april and it ends on 31st of march so year is the calendar year 
financial year begins from 1st of April to 31st of March. Every chartered accountant is aware of the term financial year. Yes. Now, in relation to a company or a body corporate, see, the word finance, the term financial year is defined with respect to company or body corporate. So, if a company or a body corporate is defining financial year, so what does it mean for them? It means the period ending on 31st March every year. All right. So, what is happening? It means period ending on 31st March. We are aware of this. And where the company is incorporated either on or after 1st of January of a year, okay, of a calendar year they are talking about. The period ending on 31st March of the following year in respect thereof, in respect whereof financial statements or body corporate is made shall be considered to be the financial year. Ma'am, we are very confused. Don't be. I am giving you notes for it which will help you to understand. So, in your notebook, you will give the heading as financial year because we are discussing the definition of financial year. So, let's draw a small table. So, let's say for example that if a company is incorporated on, I am taking different dates for discussion, okay. 2nd May 2022. So, when will the financial year end? 31st March 2023. Yes. So the financial year will end on 31st March 2023. But what if the company is incorporated on 31st December 2022? The year will again end on 31st March 2023. However, if the company is incorporated either on or after, okay, on or after 1st Jan 2023, then the financial year will end on 31st March of the following year, 2024. What if my company is incorporated, let's say, on 20th Feb 2023? So, on or after the 1st January of a year, then the year will end, financial year will end on 31st March of the following year. Why? We will discuss. First, draw the table. Okay, so if the company is incorporated on, I have mentioned three examples. Okay. So, this is my table for discussion. Okay. So, these are different scenarios. I am drawing it properly so that you know you can use it for last minute revision. This is the year on which my finance, this is the date on which my financial year ends. Now, in case your company is incorporated either on or after 1st of January, let's say it is incorporated on 20th of January, uh, 20th of February 23. How will you prepare financial statements uh, 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 for uh, just one and a half to two months? It is not fair, no. You won't be able to prepare any books of accounts properly. Uh, you have just started the business. How will you prepare the financial statements? So we cannot end your year on 31st March 23. It will be too soon. Therefore, the year ends on 31st March 2024. Now, you may ask me a question. Ma'am, what difference does it make if the company is incorporated on 31st December or it is incorporated on 1st of Jan? There's hardly a day of difference. What difference does it make if it is, you know, incorporated on 31st March or 1st Jan? Now, law says that if the company is incorporated on 1st of January or any day thereafter, we cannot force the company to, to end the uh, financial year on 31st March 2023 because it will be too less a period. But we can't do that on case-to-case -case basis, no? 
we can't go oh you are incorporated on 31st march all right for you also we'll keep some other day then somebody will say i was incorporated on 28th december just two days prior to your deadline so please help me okay all right for you also we'll give so we can't work on case to case basis we need to have some benchmarking we need to have some law and that has to be final so we say that if you are incorporated on any day before 1st of january of that year any day i have taken 31st december but it is not necessary that many companies will be incorporated on 31st december many may be enjoying their new year yes so it is unlikely that there are numerous companies incorporated on 31st december okay so any company incorporated before 1st of jan for them the year will end on 31st march 2023 but if you are a company incorporated on either 1st of jan or any day thereafter then you will then your financial year will end that is the first financial year it will end on 31st march 2024 so can i say in this case for the first financial year okay for this their first financial year will have approximately 15 months see i am assuming that you are incorporated on 1st january itself so your financial year the first financial year will be of 15 months whereas in the other cases it will be like from the date of incorporation till the year end that will be the duration of their first financial year which won't exceed 12 months yes okay as far as this situation is concerned your first financial year is of 15 months does it mean that your subsequent financial year will also be for 15 months no in that case your subsequent financial years will be of 12 months only so let's say for example that the company was incorporated on 1st of january 2023 so the first financial year will end on 31st march let me write it here for you so the first financial year will end on 31st march 2024 but your subsequent or second financial year that will begin from 1st april 24 and it will end on 31st march 25 so that will form a normal cycle okay so this will again fall in a normal cycle of 12 months so just because your first financial year was of 15 months don't be under the impression that your subsequent financial years will also be for 12 months uh, for 15 months only the first financial year is of 15 months the subsequent will be for 12 months only okay and it will be so on now let's read the uh, this part from the definition uh, i'll give you some time to copy in case you need to write all uh, this in your notebook done all right you can pause the video and write it in relation to any company or a body corporate financial year means the period ending on 31st march of every year and where the company is incorporated either on or after 1st of january of the year the period ending on 31st march of the following year in respect of which the financial statements of the company or body corporate is made up so it depends on the period for which the financial statement is made that will be your financial year provided that there is a proviso a company or a body corporate which is a holding company or a subsidiary or an associate of of a company incorporated outside india wait you won't you won't understand this without an example so let's understand this with the help of example first Okay, so have you heard of PepsiCo? Yes, it is a company incorporated outside India. But ma'am, they do have operations in India. Yes, but it is through a subsidiary. So their subsidiary. is named pepsico india holdings private limited okay 
सो दे आर प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया थ्रू अ सब्सिडरी विच इज नेम्ड पेप्सिको इंडिया होल्डिंग्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड नाउ दिस सब्सिडरी इज अ कंपनी रजिस्टर्ड इन इंडिया इट इज हैविंग रजिस्टर्ड ऑफिस इन इंडिया डू यू रिमेंबर वी हैड डिस्कस्ड ऑल दिस वाइल वी वर स्टडिंग बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट दैट पेप्सिको इंग will be a body corporate why because it is incorporated outside india it is not a company because it doesn't have a registered office in india yeah but its subsidiary that is pepsico india holding private limited this is incorporated in india having a registered office in india so this will be considered as a company under section 2 clause 20 of the companies act so it means the companies act will apply to this subsidiary and if the companies act is applying to this subsidiary it means that the financial year of pepsico india holdings private limited will be from 1st of april to 31st of march agreed or not because the companies act is applicable to you your financial year will be from 1st april to 31st of march however your parent company is following calendar year i'll just erase this your parent company is following the calendar year why because that is how the accounts are made in the in that particular country where it is incorporated so they are following the calendar year that is from 1st of jan to 31st of december now why is india word mentioned in the name because pepsico has subsidiaries in many countries how will i know which subsidiary i am referring to they, they have a presence in many countries so in order to identify we have used the word india now every person would want to know all right i want to know what kind of business we are doing as a group see we have many subsidiaries so if i add the accounts of all these subsidiaries i will get a consolidated position of the entire group as a whole so we went to consolidate the books and we realized that pepsico the parent company is preparing the books of accounts for the calendar year whereas the subsidiary in india is following the financial year because that is the requirement of that country in which it is incorporated is it possible for us to merge the books is it possible for me to consolidate the book that's not possible i will not be able to consolidate and find the position of the group as a whole why because they both are preparing accounts for a different period of time so what should we do what is the solution so for the purpose of consolidation we have permitted okay we have permitted pepsico india holdings private limited to make an application to the central government and the central government will permit pepsico india holding private limited to follow any year for preparing the books of accounts for consolidation purpose they are permitted to follow any year any means now it is it is not necessary that you follow calendar year you follow financial year you can follow any year you can say that my year begins from 1st of february to 31st of january so since we are allowing you to make changes you might as well follow any year of your choice we can't be specific in this manner so pepsico india holdings will make an application to the central government and the central government will permit them to to use or to follow any year as the financial year to follow any year as financial year and basically this is done for consolidation purpose okay so if you want to make notes for consolidation that is to know the position of the group as a whole to know the position of group as a whole i may permit now i was just talking to someone from pepsico india holdings and uh, they informed me that they are following some different year as the cal as the uh, financial year 
it suddenly clicked me that yeah that it will be better for my business also i am a company incorporated in india i don't have such holding or subsidiary i don't have any company incorporated outside india with whom i have to consolidate the accounts can i also gain the benefit of following any period for my financial year sorry this is available only and only if you are having if you are a holding or a subsidiary or an associate of any company incorporated outside india so not everyone can claim this privilege let us read all this from the notes now provided that where a body corporate or a company which is a holding or subsidiary now in my example i chose subsidiary company and the name was pepsico india holdings private limited i chose this so body corporate which is a holding or a subsidiary or a or an associate of a company incorporated outside india so in my example it was pepsico inc yes and it is required to follow a different financial year for consolidation because i want to know the position of the group as a whole so i i will have to follow a different financial year then the central government may on an application made by that company which company the one in india that means that company that means pepsico india holdings private limited this company will make an application so i will write over here pepsico india will make an application to the central government and as may be prescribed you can ignore that in such form as may be prescribed ignore that okay so then the central government will allow or they will permit any period highlight the word any now we are in allowing you so you may in fact follow any period as its financial year whether or not that period is a year it may not be a year it may not be a calendar year you can have any period of your choice so that is the liberty which we have given now but only to such companies okay is it clear is it clear students yes now you can pause the video any time and take notes let us continue with the next definition clause 42 defines a foreign company this anyways we are going to study next and there are other points also which i want to introduce you when we study foreign company so foreign company is a company we just highlight the keywords now it is a company or a body corporate all right it is incorporated outside india now company whether it is domestic or foreign depends on the place of incorporation so if it is incorporated in india it's an indian company domestic company and if it is incorporated outside india it is a foreign company so foreign company means a company or a body corporate incorporated outside india but it has a place of business in india either by itself or through agent it may be present physically or it may be present electronically you must have studied this in foundation it also conducts business activity in india in any other manner so because you are doing business in india indian laws will apply you can't say no 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 the place where i was incorporated had some different rules you have been incorporated outside india but you are doing business in india so for that business which you are doing in india the indian laws will apply then we have free reserves which i will discuss when i uh, discuss the chapter share and share capital with you i am not doing it now but just remember that free reserves are those reserves which are available for distribution in the form of dividend i don't have any specific use or purpose for that reserve it is free you can use it for anything that you want okay it is not a capital reserve capital reserve is for a fixed purpose this is a free reserve use it for any purpose that you want okay it is generally earned from regular business activities global depository receipt is not covered government company important for exam along with a clause number so clause 45 it defines a government company what is a government company you know the definition i am aware of that it means any company in which not less than it means at least 
of the paid up share capital is held either by the central government or state government or one or more sorry or partly by central partly by one or more state governments all right so a government company is a company in which at least 51 percent of the capital is held either by the central government on its own or state government and or governments or partly by central partly by state government there is also one more part to this definition it includes a company which is a subsidiary of such government company so it means that if you are a subsidiary of a government company all the provisions of a government company shall apply ma'am why are we even studying what is a government company see because the provisions are different they may be they not are they may be different for a company and for, for a government company for a company other than government company and government company like in audit you must have studied and we are also going to study in audit and auditors that in case of a company auditors are appointed by the members in the general meeting annual general meeting that is one of the ordinary businesses so in case of a company other than government company auditors are appointed by the members but in case of a government company auditor is appointed by the comptroller and auditor general of india so provisions sections may be different for a government company and for a company other than a government company that is why we need to first know when will we classify a company as a government company so at least 51% not 50 but 51% of the capital is held either by the central government one or more state governments or partly by central partly by one or more state governments i have an example for you over here oh see look here so in this case coal india limited it is a government company it has two subsidies actually it has many subsidies i have selected two for discussion it has subsidies like bharat coking coal limited and central coal fields limited these subsidiary companies are also considered as government company it simply means that the provisions applicable to government company shall apply to these subsidiaries also so they are also deemed to be government company the provisions of government company shall apply we have power finance corporation limited it has many subsidiaries but i have chosen two pfc green energy limited and pfc consulting limited see over here it is mentioned it is a wholly owned subsidiary of power finance corporation for the purpose of this act this is also considered as a government company all right going back to that page we discussed what is a government company and we also made notes let us continue next we have the definition of holding company yes i am a holding if you are my subsidiary read the definition given under clause 46 in relation to one or more companies it means a company of which such subsidiaries such companies are subsidiary so i am holding if you are my subsidiary independent director all this is not important issued capital means the capital which we issue from time to time not important for exam kmp yes important for exam along with a clause number so who is a kmp clause 50 one now kmp there is nothing to explain as such you just need to understand and remember key managerial person they are important people in the organization in relation to a company all right we are defining who is a kmp chief executive officer managing director manager company secretary whole time I'll, i'll write it properly i'll just reduce the font size ceo managing director manager company secretary whole time director someone who is in whole time employment of the company he is a director but he is in whole time employment chief financial officer someone who is appointed any other officer but not more than one level below the director so let's say that i have a director one level below him is an associate director okay this person is also kmp we won't go below this we won't go below this someone who is in whole time employment and designated as kmp all right he is in whole time employment 
होल टाइम एम्प्लॉयमेंट ही इज ऑल्सो के एम पी वी डोट वी वॉन्ट गो वन लेवल बिलो दिस एनी सच ऑफिसर एज मे बी प्रिस्क्राइब एज ऑफ ना नो अदर ऑफिसर हैज बीन प्रिस्क्राइब इट इज ऑलवेज एडवाइजेबल टू हैव अ के एम पी पॉलिसी ऑफ योर ओन कंपनी सो हु इज इंक्लूडेड लेट एस मेमोराइज सी ई ओ एम डी मैनेजर कंपनी सेक्रेटरी होल टाइम डायरेक्टर सॉरी आई फोर होल टाइम डायरेक्टर सी एफ ओ एनी ऑफिसर नॉट वन लेवल बिलो द डायरेक्टर एंड एनी अदर पर्सन एज मे बी स्पेसिफाइड और प्रिस्क्राइब सो इजी सी ई ओ एम डी मैनेजर सी एस होल टाइम डायरेक्टर सी एफ ओ एनी पर्सन नॉट बिलो वन लेवल टू द डायरेक्टर एंड एनी अदर पर्सन एज मे बी प्रिस्क्राइब और then very important for exam so not very important for exam the definition of manager and managing director it's not very important but we are going to discuss we should have knowledge it will help us in ca final is who is a manager how is he different from a managing director all that will help us later on now let us understand the meaning as well as the difference between these two terms with the use of color coding okay now pay attention to how i am discussing this uh, definition it is uh, important that you know the flow because you will understand everything in this note itself now who is a manager see manager is an individual he need not be director but we want an individual can't be a body corporate okay only an individual living person only a living person can be a manager why how will an artificial person govern the company how will an artificial person take decisions for the company so we need a living person okay all right so manager means any individual living person managing director means a director in order to be a managing director you need to be a director first but in order to be a manager do you need to be a director any individual can become a manager maybe a director may not be a director okay so only an individual can be a manager only a director can be a managing director all right now second point of difference he is subject to the superintendence control direction of the board of directors so can i say board of directors are supreme below that we have the manager so manager is always under the control of under the superintendence of means we are mon monitoring him controlling him or he is uh, uh, operating as per the instructions or the directions of the board let's see what a managing director is he is a managing director by virtue of means because of articles of the company so his name is mentioned in the articles that he will be the managing director of the company or there is some agreement with the company or a resolution is passed either in the general meeting or the board meeting so it is important that i make notes here A resolution is passed where either general meeting or board meeting, resolving to appoint X and Y as the managing any X Y person as the managing director. So, in case of manager, we discussed he is subject to the superintendence, control, direction of the board. Whereas, how do you become a managing director by virtue of the articles, or there by virtue of the articles. or there may be some agreement with the company that this person is the managing director or a resolution is passed either in the general meeting or board meeting have you understood up till here yes now what does a manager do that should be our main discussion point we know he should be an individual we know that he operates below the directors but what does he do he has the management of he has the management of whole or substantially whole of the affairs of the company we will put it in a box either whole or substantially the whole of affairs of the company whereas a managing director has substantial powers not whole powers but substantial powers of managing see what does a manager do he manages and ensures that everything is operating smoothly we may give him the management of the whole of the affairs of the company you manage the entire company or we may give him substantial power substantial means considerable power to manage 
whereas a managing director gets substantial powers considerable but not whole ma'am i have a doubt here if i have appointed a manager and given him whole of the powers can i also appoint a managing director and give him substantial power it is impossible you cannot have manager and managing director at the same time how can you give substantial powers to both how can you give whole powers to both you can either have a manager or a managing director ma'am can i have two managers how is that possible you are giving either whole or substantial power to two people that's not possible so you will have a manager another doubt ma'am my uncle is a product manager my cousin is a sales manager my neighbor is an it manager ma'am are, are they also included over here no 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 we are not talking at the departmental level we are not talking at the branch he is a branch manager we are not talking about all that we are talking about a person who has either whole or substantial that is important power to manage the entire company we are talking about a very high level of person okay someone who is who is at a very higher post we are not talking about people who are at a lower level i am not saying that they are working at a lower level i am just talking about the hierarchy okay so actually because of so many uh, positions no he is a managing director he is a manager manager sometimes we lose what is the meaning of manager as per the companies act so here we are talking about a person who operates at a very high level of management okay so up till now what have i discussed manager is a person who is an individual whereas managing director has to be a director first second point we discussed that a manager will have i'll highlight as i do he will be operating under the superintendent's control and direction of the board of directors but a managing director he will be appointed either through the articles of the company or by any agreement or by resolution passed in the general meeting or board meeting powers manager may have either whole or substantially whole power managing director has substantial power now what is the meaning of substantial power that is also explained in the act that is also explained over here we will be discussing it subsequently now next point that we need to know manager includes a director it includes director or any other person occupying the position of the manager by whatever name you call him you you may not call him a manager but he has the entire control of the company he is considered just like a manager only as per the act can i say that to be a manager you may be a director you may not be a director any person can be a manager but to be a managing director it includes okay again it includes a director occupying the position of a managing director by whatever name called so it means that to become a managing director i have to be a director first yes or no okay so let's go through the points again manager can be an individual whereas a managing director has to be a director manager is under the superintendent's control or under the uh, direction he operates under the direction of the board whereas in this case a managing director he may be appointed as as per the articles or by any agreement or through a resolution passed either at the board meeting or a general meeting manager has substantial or whole of the powers managing director has only substantial powers manager may or may not be the director see i i am a director and i am also a manager no harm in that but for a managing director you have to be a director first and only then you can be appointed as a managing director what is the meaning of substantial power see because the word is used it is inevitable that we explain it otherwise anybody will say this is substantial power what is substantial power for the purpose of this clause the power to do administrative acts or acts of routine nature when authorized by the board will not be deemed okay not word is important it is not deemed to be substantial powers of management so any administrative or routine task who has asked you to do that board has asked me to perform that part it is routine it's just basic administration it is for smooth functioning of the company that is not substantial substantial will include anything other than these okay these are just examples they can't define what is substantial it all depends on facts but very important decisions something which is at the top level of management that is substantial 
Now, this will not include power to affix the common seal of the company, power to draw, endorse, check on account of the company, or and draw and endorse any other negotiable instrument, sign the share certificate, or to direct registration of transfer of any shares. That's not substantial. It is very routine. But you know what? I felt that I was given the authority to sign and endorse the check. I thought I'm a very influential person. It is a it is an important power. No, I can sign checks, but company needs to sign thousands of checks. That's a routine task for the company. You have been delegated. You have been appointed by the board, authorized by the board to do that because somebody has to do it. Okay, so it's a routine work. We have to make payments. We need to endorse instruments. That's not substantial. We don't do it like once in a while. It's not substantial. It's a routine task. All this is not substantial. Okay, so students, that this was the meaning of manager and managing director. All right. Next, let us discuss the definition of a member as given under clause fifty-five. Simply put. Member is a person whose name appears in the register of members. So, if my name is in the register, I am a member. If my name is not in the register, I am just a shareholder. I will become a member my, when my name is entered in the register. Okay. I have a small note for that. So, who is a member? Now, member is a person whose name appears in the register. So, if my name is there, I am a member. You are considered as a member if you are a subscriber to the memorandum. Now, who is a subscriber? Subscriber is a person who signs the memorandum and agrees to purchase the number of shares mentioned against his name. Like I started the company with my friend, and we both signed the memorandum and we agreed to put one lakh rupees each. We got ten thousand shares each from the company, face value ten. So, see, if you are incorporating a company, you need some some money at least in the company. Although there is no prescribed paid up capital, minimum capital, but you need to put in some money. Otherwise, uh, how will the business run? How will you pay for the professionals who are helping you in incorporation? So you need to bring in some money at least. Who brings that money? The subscribers. Who are subscribers? People who sign the memorandum. They are the persons who incorporate the company. They are the first shareholders of the company. So a subscriber is automatically deemed to be a member. Just because he is a subscriber, it is not necessary that his name appears in the register. It is not necessary that we have made he has given application, we have made allotments. Allotment is also not necessary to hold him liable as a contributory in the event of winding up. Now let's say what happens: company is incorporated, company incurred a few liabilities. Let's say to three lakh rupees, uh, or let's say two uh, lakh rupees. Okay, two lakh rupees. Now then, after uh, incorporation, the company purchased goods worth two lakh. Then the company went into liquidation. So who will pay that two lakh? Contributories, even though their name is not mentioned in the register, even though we have not yet allotted shares to them. See, students, what happens is, when I incorporate a company, and I sign the memorandum, I am merely agreeing to purchase the shares of the company. I have not paid any money. It's just an agreement that I am signing the memorandum. I will pay the money that is mentioned against my name. I have one eighty days from incorporation to bring that money in the business. So as of now, I have not brought anything in the business. As of now, there is no money in the business, but I have only agreed. You have agreed. You are a member. You will have to bring in that money. You will have to contribute that money if the company goes into liquidation. You will have to use that money to pay the creditors. So allotment is also not required to make him liable. He is liable even if the name is not mentioned. He cannot later on refuse to purchase. Once you have signed the memorandum, you will have to purchase. You cannot cancel the contract after incorporation. So a subscriber is automatically considered as. Member of the company, he is the first shareholder. He is the first member of the company. Later, anybody who makes an application in writing, writing is the requirement of law. Oral application will not uh, allow you to become member of the company. So, oral application is not valid. Mere entry is not sufficient in the register. You have to apply in writing. Okay, 
and any person whose name appears as a beneficiary in the records of the depository is also considered as member do you really think companies like reliance and tata whose shares are traded in huge volume have the time to update their register every day no the shares are in demat form there there is there is numerous trading happening in the market of those shares if your name appears in the records of the depository you are a member so what the company does the company also adopts the records maintained by the depository if your name is in the records of the depository as the owner of shares you are our member so if your name appears as the beneficial owner in the records of the depository you are considered as the owner or as the member so i can become a member by subscribing to the memorandum by an agreement in writing by applying in writing or i may become if my name appears in the records of depository so let's read this from the textbook in relation to a company very nicely said we can be a member of a cooperative society we can be a member of a housing society i am talking about member of the company how will you become member of the company you may subscribe to the memorandum any person who has deemed to have deemed what is important to agreed it's just an agreement i have not contributed anything i have 180 days from incorporation to bring that money i have agreed on registration i will be entered as a member in the register i am going to be a member allotments will be made within 2 months of incorporation so then i will be i am a member i am considered as a member every other person other person who agrees in writing so writing is the requirement of law i have to make it in writing to become a member and my name is entered in the register of members if my name is not entered in the register i'm just a shareholder let's there's a difference between member and shareholder most of the times member and shareholder means the same most of the times but what if mr x he is a member and he transferred shares to mr y but transfer procedure takes time no let's say he is a member of a private company and he holds shares in the physical form it is still possible for private company he transferred shares to mr y now transfer procedure takes time so as of now x is mentioned in the member uh, register of members he is the member but is he a shareholder no shares are with y so y is considered as a shareholder so sometimes under certain circumstances you may be a member but not a shareholder you may be a shareholder but not a member so here x is a member but he is no longer a shareholder y is a shareholder but he is not yet a member because his name is not appearing in the register every person holding share and whose name is entered as the beneficial owner in the records of the depository will be considered as a member so i am a subscriber or i agree in writing or my name is entered as a beneficial owner in the records of the depository i am a member not very important for exam but you need to know the meaning okay so this was the definition of member